We are back on the channel, Survive and Thrive. And I missed out last week, had a little bit of congestion, as you can hear. I'm still trying to get over that. But I uh, wanted to come back today and talk about a company that I've talked about on several occasions, and that's in the biotech industry. The company is Novavax, and most notably known for their alternative to the mRNA vaccine. And I want to look at a few key aspects of what's happening in today's news and where I think they might be headed. So taking a look at this first article in Yahoo Finance, this analyst says to be positive about Novavax's vaccine chances. And like Pfizer and Moderna, Novavax also has their own version of the vaccine. But unlike Pfizer or Moderna, Novavax's vaccine hasn't yet been approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, not even for restricted emergency use authorization, but it soon might. On Friday last week, the FDA announced that on June 7th, it will convene an advisory committee to review Novavax's application for its vaccine for potential EUA. A positive outcome isn't certain, and even if the advisory committee recommends giving EUA to NVX, the FDA itself might not agree. That being said, the ball is moving in the right direction right now, and investors are responding to the good news, bidding Novavax stock up 31% over the past two trading sessions. And for any of you who have been following this company or any biotech companies in particular, you know that stock price action can change very quickly and is volatile. As B. Riley analyst May Yank Memtani published some quick thoughts on this latest development and its implications for Novavax stock. A couple few of these points stand out. First and foremost, Memtani notes that in contrast to Pfizer and Moderna's vaccines, both of which are based on mRNA technology, Novavax's vaccine is a protein-based vaccine and indeed currently the sole viable alternative to mRNA and is under consideration by the FDA. That might prove attractive to individuals who have been shying away from use of the mRNA-based vaccines and give Novavax a niche it can fill. And we've seen with this company in particular, they've had a lot of great news over the years, but I still see an issue with them really being able to deliver. A lot of times they've delayed and or not been able to follow through on their true vision and being able to implement their technology as fast as they would like. And that has got a lot of investors frustrated with not being able to see the gains that they should be seeing. Memtani also points out that Novavax's vaccine has been approved for use in Japan and received a biologics license application approval in South Korea. Indeed, according to one vaccine tracker, Novavaxivit has been approved in 37 countries around the world, just not in the US and is in trials in a dozen countries, including the US. That being said, here in the US and in line with the review and approval process used on the other company's vaccines, the FDA will first examine whether NVX is safe and effective for use only in patients aged 18 and over. Considering that Pfizer's and Moderna's vaccines have already progressed through that age group, through tweens, through kids, and are now being considered for use in toddlers as young as six months, there will still be a very wide gap in the total addressable market open to Novavax's vaccine vis-a-vis -vis what Pfizer and Moderna can sell to. You have to figure that it makes Novavax's vaccine relatively less valuable than Pfizer's Comirnaty or Moderna's Spikevax, even if NVX does get EUA. Yet even so, Momtani sees Novavax stock as being worth as much as four times what it costs today, up to $203 a share, based largely on this development. And I am in agreement that news such as this can really help to push the price action in the right direction. And I've been sitting on my shares that I first talked about for over a year now. And so anytime that we get to all time new highs, they've been as close to almost $300 per share. I'll be looking at potentially unloading all of these shares. And if you wanna go back and look and see what my cost basis was at the time I purchased, it was very low, under $20 but I'll put a suggestion link here so you can go check out that video. Timeline-wise, Mamtani says he's expecting Novavax to submit clinical trial results to the FDA in this current Q2 based on positive results generated from Phase 3 Prevent 19 Adolescence Cohort and notes that the company is already proceeding to third booster dose evaluation for which Novavax may seek approval in the second half of this year. 
Finally, earnings-wise, Momtani notes that Novavax is continuing to manufacture and ship NVX doses worldwide in expectation of positive EUA results. He predicts the company will succeed in raking in full-year sales of between $4 billion and $5 billion, and he rates Novavax stock a buy. Overall, NVAX has seven recent analyst reviews on record, breaking down to five buys and two holds, giving the stock a moderate buy analyst consensus rating. Based on the $169 average price target, shares could rise 188% in the next 12 months. So those are all positive catalysts and moving us in the right direction, and that's why I continue to hold. I wanna see where this one goes. And always in the back of my mind, like I've talked about before, this company has a authorization for a flu shot. And so once they get back to pushing that through and moving towards an accelerated program for approval with the FDA, we could see that really start to boost sales and bring in revenue, which Novavax has never seen before. And once that happens, be ready to watch that share price really jump. Going over to another Yahoo Finance article, can Novavax rebuild investor confidence? Analysts weigh in. The pandemic tailwinds have been spirited away on the wind of a change. Companies which thrived as COVID-19 concerns trumped any other global developments are now feeling the effect of its waning influence. This has been evident from the performance of e-commerce stocks, streamers, and all manner of WFH names, or working from home. Of course, pandemic stocks, that segment which came into being as the pandemic took hold, are feeling the effect too. With the pandemic now on the back foot in many parts of the world, the demand for COVID vaccines is dropping, a fact noted by B. Riley's Mayank Mumtani. The imbalance to supply and demand for these products has been particularly alarming as already evidenced by J&J's first quarter earnings guidance and anticipated first quarter earnings commentary from AZN, BNTX, Pfizer, MRNA, REGN, Mimtani explained. But more so than any of those companies, one of the pandemic era's biggest stars has suffered the most from the shift in sentiment. Novavax shares are down 81% over the past 12 months, as the Maryland-based vaccine maker still hasn't managed to get its COVID-19 across the finish line in the U.S. The company has yet to receive emergency use authorization, as we talked about before. However, interestingly, while investors have evidently become impatient around the slow regulatory progress, as many developed nations ready for the transition to a post-pandemic world, Mumtani thinks Novavax remains relatively the most protected from the generally bearish investor sentiment brewing for C-19 vaccine and therapeutic peers. But that could be dependent on how the anticipated mid-May Q1 print turns out. To get investors back on side, Momtani expects Novavax to reassure investors on the near-term and long-term strength of its recently established global vaccine biz. And by reiterating the fiscal year 22 revenue guidance of four to five billion, the company could take the first step in rebuilding investor confidence with its rejuvenated protein-based platform continuing to serve as a source of delivering diversified multi-product portfolio for COVID, flu, malaria, and RSV. And lastly, I wanted to touch on yet another article in Yahoo Finance. It just happens to be that most of the news I've been able to find have been from this source. Is a surprise coming for Novavax this earnings season? Investors are always looking for stocks that are poised to be at earnings season and Novavax may be one such company. The firm has earnings coming up pretty soon and it's actually Monday's close. So by the time I actually publish this video, we will be able to see the results of their Q1 earnings. And that will give us a signal to tell us if that's going to help increase or boost their share price and push them into a positive catalyst or continue them on a downward spiral. The firm has earnings coming up pretty soon and events are shaping up quite nicely for their report. That is because Novavax is seeing favorable earnings estimate revision activity as of late, which is generally a precursor to an earnings beat. After all, analysts raising estimates right before earnings with the most up-to-date information possible is a pretty good indicator of some favorable trends underneath the surface for NVAX in this report. In fact, the most accurate estimate for the current quarter is currently at $3.67 per share for NVAX compared to a broader Zach's consensus estimate of $3.33 per share. This suggests that analysts have already recently bumped up their estimates for NVAX, giving the stock a Zach earnings ESP of 
plus 10.13% heading into earnings season. Why is this important? A positive reading for the Zacks earning ESP has proven to be very powerful in producing both positive surprises and outperforming the market. Our recent 10-year backtest shows that stocks that have a positive earnings ESP and a Zacks rank number 3 or hold or better show a positive surprise nearly 70% of the time and have returned over 28% on average in annual returns. Given that Novavax has a Zacks rank number 3 and an ESP in positive territory, territory Investors might want to consider this stock ahead of earnings. So I'm excited to see what comes out of this Q1 earnings report and if it really does help to push us in the right direction. And I will continue to hold this company until I get to a point of profitability that I feel really good about. And like I said, if we get into that 200 plus to almost $300 per share, that will be my time to really lock in my gains. Now, taking a look at the price history that we've had, you can see that just within the last day, as far as trading, down 2.3%, up 27, almost 28% in the past five days, almost down a half percent in the past month. If we go back to six months, you can see down 66%, so quite a downward slide. We were as high as $217 per share. And then, like I said, when I did my last video back in March, we were in the $80, $75 range. So we've come down almost another $20 to $25 per share. And you can see where we almost hit $265, $266 there. And all-time high, $290 per share. So very volatile you can see a lot of up and down spikes and valleys and so you have to be really comfortable and disciplined to be able to ride this one out but like i said i still don't think that they've heard their best news yet and still there is time i think that we can take advantage of really selling the news when they do bring everything together and hopefully they are successful in being able to get their eua authorization here in the u.s and that will further boost revenue and investors' confidence in the company and really wanting to buy in and helping to get this one to pump. So that's really what I wanted to touch on today. Those catalysts that are happening now or in the immediate future and where it might take us. So if others have thoughts, definitely leave comments below. And let's use this forum as an exchange to trade information between fellow investors in the YouTube community and help me to continue to build this channel by hitting that like button and subscribing. That's all I had for this week. Make it a great week. And until next time, don't just survive, thrive!